I think. <laughs> All right, we'll be back soon. Kona will be my fourth. But you didn't get to do Tahoe last year, right? Because I of didn't because of the smoke they and they canceled it. It's such yeah. A yeah, I mean, it was like, it was 625 and they canceled it. We were in our wetsuits. We, oh, no. we were lined up. But I did get into Chattanooga the next week. Oh, you did? So I so. flew from Tahoe, flew home, washed the smoke smell out of all of my clothes. Yes, yeah, and hair. And then left the next day to go to Chattanooga. And I got to race in Chattanooga. Nice. Do you have any big goals for Kona? I want to go out, so I want to go out, have fun, enjoy the day. That's sort of been my motto for this year. It was pretty serious last year. Yeah, so and I just, hence maybe the injury. Yep, and hence, yeah, I took, I was really serious last year and beat myself up. And so I just wanted to go out and have fun this year. Yeah. You were in Alcatraz, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You raced there as well. I raced there as well. Yes. I so lined fun. up like a couple of people behind you. Oh, you did. I did. That's like one of my favorite races. I had, yeah, I had a blast. So, do you have any advice, sort of going into, you know, the final couple of weeks, as how far long? as heat training? Goes? Yeah. So, how far in advance are you going into Kona? I'm flying in on Wednesday. So you're last minute. I'm, okay. Yeah, last minute. Um, so there's a, like a, I go in two weeks in advance. So generally they say it takes about 10 days to adjust to that humidity and for your sweat rates yep. to change. But what you can do is. Go to my boss two weeks early. Yeah, and go to your boss and take <laughs> two weeks off. Yeah. I mean, it, ten, a lot of pros come from, come from Boulder and go in 10 days out. Yep. I like two weeks because you can still do a bit of training mm -hmm. out on the course then. But if you don't have the time, you don't have the time. So what you can do instead is um, some sauna. I was so, going to ask, yeah. so I've heard about that. So my husband's going out to uh, 10 days before the race, okay. which is still enough time, but he has already done a couple of like 20 minute sauna sessions. So at the end of whatever session, last session of the day, he'll go into the sauna for 20 minutes. He'll take make sure he takes two bottles of water. Because you don't want to be depleting yourself. That's the biggest no-no, obviously, leading into a hot race. Yeah. You want to make sure you're replacing all those electrolytes. So you go in uh, for 20 minutes. You probably want to do, I guess we're three and a half weeks out. You probably want to do that a couple of times a week. For the next three weeks, the you next think? three weeks, yeah. Okay. What most people don't know about Kona is there's like 5,000 feet of climbing. So because... I mean, you think it's flat. It's not flat. The whole day, you're kind of up and down. Um, certainly the first 20 miles out past the airport are pretty flat, but after that, it's just they're just rollers all day. Okay. What you need to be aware of is that it can be really windy, which everybody knows, but you've got to make sure you keep hydrating when yeah. it's windy. So it can be so windy that you can't take your hands off the bars to, to take a sip of water. So do you have a jet stream or a straw? I do. Perfect. Yep. So that's why I use a jet stream as well, just because I want to be able to hydrate. To, to drink and not have if, to take if, your... If there's yeah. crazy winds and I can't take my hands off the handlebar for fear of crashing, I can still drink. get yep. get um, fluids in and, and electrolytes in or whatever. So that's definitely important. Uh, the run is really hot and humid. And again, it's different every year, but for the most part, the first part of the run's really hot and humid. So mm -hmm. along the lead drive, you'll feel like you can't breathe. Yeah. It's so hot. Um, but then once you get down the Queen K, because it's more open, it's hot still, but generally there's a bit of a breeze to okay. cool you down. So it's not as bad once you get out into the Queen K. It's just the first. The first stretch. Yeah. The so first stretch down. The lead yeah. drive is just, okay. it's just like a little oven down there. It's a sweat box. So always, every single aid station, I put ice down my top and I put ice down my pants too. Okay. Ice down your pants is godsend because there's so many big arteries down in your groin mm -hmm. that when you put ice down there, just helps cool your body. The whole day, all you want to, I guess I can turn around. Yeah. The whole day, what you want to be doing is trying to keep your um, core, temperature, core down. temperature down. So just be mindful of that all day. Like okay. 
because as soon as you get into the red, it's like it's yeah, hard to you can't hard you to can't recover. Back. Yeah, it's tough to recover from. It's that tough. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, always cooling your body and always kind of slowly taking on those nutrients. But I mean, you know, you've done a few Ironmans, you know how to fuel well. You know what to yeah, eat. Yeah, and Boulder was a Boulder was a warm day, so I yeah, you, I took in liquids at every aid station on yeah, the run. Every single aid station. Yeah. Um, and then, I didn't put ice down my pants, but I'm going to. <laughs> so why does Tim come out later? Why don't you guys go out together? He's trying to figure out what works best for him. And, okay. Um, he's he's tried two weeks out twice and had bad races both times, and whether that was just coincidence or not, I mean, you've just you got to find out what works yep. best for you. And for him. He's done 10 days out two times, and that's worked really well for him. Okay. He, he feels like after about seven days on the island, he feels great. And so he's going to kind of just stick with that. And... Are the two of you competitive with each other? We are, but we aren't. Like, we, we probably think we used to be more competitive with each other, and now that we're, we're married, we're a team, like, it's in <laughs> our best interest for both of us to do well. Um, I mean, we always were a team when we were dating, but... We it's different of, once you get married. Yeah, once you yeah. get married, you're like, yeah, we're in this together, no matter what. And, uh, I mean, is your husband a triathlete? Does he race at all? He is not a triathlete. He doesn't race. We're both very competitive. Yeah. And we tend to be competitive with each other. Okay. So I think it's good that we have yeah. separate sports. So sure. he golfs, he plays racquetball, you know. Yeah. Lots of stuff he does with his buddies. It, it, it works well for us yeah. because I can go out on a long training ride. He goes out and plays golf. golf. And it's we're at home fun. together in the afternoon. Yeah. And then we've got the whole evening to spend together. Yeah. We uh, probably wouldn't do this if we weren't all competitive. Absolutely. In some aspects. No, you have, yeah, <laughs> for sure. You work out 35 hours a week? Well, in my biggest block, it's about 35 hours. Okay. Yeah. I mean, not, not, not working out that much year round. It's probably more like, you know, 25, but it builds up. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you know, the last 10 weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's where you've been at. 30, 30, wow. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't go to a job after that. <laughs> I go home and try and take a nap or sit on the couch. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you what do you do to recover? Yeah, um, I spend a lot of time in my Normatec boots. Okay. Um, I do, I try and get massaged once a week at least, maybe two times a week, and I also get dry needling. Um, and just a lot of sleep. Um, I find from myself, sleep, sleep's mm -hmm. the best recovery if, oh, you can, if you can get the time to have enough sleep. But um, How much do you sleep a night? Probably seven to eight hours, okay. and if I get seven to eight hours at night, then I'll take a two hour nap in the daytime. If I get 10 hours at night, I don't need it. So I probably, over a 24 hour period, I need I need nine to 11 hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to function mm -hmm. at my best yeah. level. What about you? Uh, I sleep seven to eight hours. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you're working, so there's no And naps. then, yeah, there's, I don't think, I think my <laughs> boss would frown on napping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> napping in a lunchroom, this is frowned upon. I don't know. I just I just enjoy the, the sport and seeing how fast I can go. Really, I mean that's motivation enough for me. Like, I, I mean I don't know. I I'm one of six kids. I grew up on a farm. Like I never, no one ever expected me to do anything in life. I guess and here I am, like <laughs> free time world champion and pretty amazing. Kind of just you know I just love the challenge that this sport gives you and just seeing how far I can go and how far my body, what my body is capable of, that's my motivating factor. You know, I get asked a lot, why, you know, you've won Kona twice, why do you want to go back? And I'm like, well, I don't think I've had my best race in Kona yet. I feel like I can go faster and I feel like I've got more to give. And while I feel like that, I, I think that's what motivates me to get out of bed and keep pushing and, and seeing what my perfect race is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think you, do you feel like you've had your perfect race? I, I don't think I've, I mean, I've had some pretty great races. You've had some pretty amazing, <laughs> great races. And uh, 2013, I think is, 2014, I had a good race. I didn't, I didn't bike as, as well as I did the year before, hence mm -hmm. the big yeah. deficit. And I ran about the same time. So I think 2013 has been my best race to date. Um, I think I can, I can do a little bit better than that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, whether it happens or not, you know, time will tell, but. Um, I'm excited to go and give it a crack, you know? What, what motivates you to be a triathlete and do this sport? 
Um, yeah, I mean, challenging myself. I mean, I'm, I'm competitive, right? Um, so I love the competition. I just, I love going out and racing, being out there with your friends. Yeah. It's really amazing. It's such and a great just, community. It is. Sport. It's a really fun community. Yeah. So, I've met so many amazing people. Yeah. Just who are just amazing people yeah. on top of the fact that they're amazing athletes, totally. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, and then the accomplishments of coming across that finish line after yeah. an Ironman. Yeah, you feel really like you can take them nothing, all. Yeah. You've really accomplished something amazing. You've yeah. pushed your body to its limits. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, it, and that's the similarity in being a professional and being an amateur. Like, we all get that feeling. It's just being so proud of yourself to have accomplished, you know, this crazy one day feat. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are. There are some other amazing sports out there, but not many that entail. Not many that entail swimming, everything. cycling, running, and, and all in one day. And then all the other little factors the nutrition, your the nutrition. staying hydrated, the mental aspect of it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hey, I was sampling all day. You, you deserve it. You deserve it. All right. Where's the off button? There's an off button. Well, this, it's a press button start. Oh, it says stop. Oh, it's the same. In, my, in the other car I have it. Is it a different button? Yeah, there's two buttons. Hmm. That's a pretty nice car.